Hello, everybody. Welcome to the quality session today. And in today's class, we are going to talk about uh, silent features of our constitution. And before we start our lecture, you should know the introduction of preamble. So whenever you get a question, you can always start uh, like what is preamble? How does it start? So it starts with we, the people of India, have solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic and to secure to all its citizen fraternity, assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation. So this is the introduction of our constitution. And in our, in our constitution, there uh, many amendments have been taken place so far, but uh, you need to uh, remember, you need to memorize only five amendments which were very, very important. These were 7th Amendment, 42nd Amendment, then 44th Amendment, uh, 73rd Amendment, and then uh, your 74th Amendment. Afterwards, uh, the 42nd Amendment is also known as Mini Constitution, uh, and it came during the time of emergency in 1976. Our Indian parliamentary system is based on a uh, British parliamentary system. However, there are some differences as well in Indian parliamentary system and in British parliamentary system. So it, although we follow uh, our constitution, our parliamentary system is largely based on it. Still, there are some differences. Just two differences are there. Number first difference is Indian. That the, the India has an elected head. That means our president is indirectly elected, and that is why we are republic. Uh, whereas the Britain has an hereditary head, and they follow monarchy. Uh, they are having uh, the president from one family only. And second is Indian Parliament is not so sovereign body like the British Parliament. So in when we compare these two parliament, then we see okay. Indian Parliament is not so sovereign. Like we have judiciary, we have legislative, uh, we have execu executive. So three bodies are there. There is a proper check and balance. Uh, whereas uh, in comparison to Britain, uh, our Indian Parliament is not so sovereign body. All right. So let's talk about its features. So there are some features. Uh, these are known as silent features and uh, these features distinguish uh, this constitution from the other uh, countries' constitution. And these features are first is lengthiest and written constitution. Our constitution, our Indian constitution, is the lengthiest and written constitution. Second is we have taken uh, many things from. Uh, others countries constitution third is our constitution is a blend of rigidity and flexibility flexibility fourth is we follow federal system with unitary bias fifth parliamentary form of government and sixth is parliamentary sovereignty with judicial supremacy so these are the six silent features although there are many other features as well but in this video we will we are going to talk about just these six and maybe another video i will discuss others other features as well so let's uh, without wasting any without wasting any time let's discuss the first uh, feature which is lengthiest and written constitution all right so why it is lengthiest and uh, written constitution because our constitution is comprehensive, elaborated, and detailed document. Basically, we have mentioned all the basic duties, rights, restriction, everything in our constitution. So our constitution is lengthiest and as well as written. So uh, originally, 20, on 26th of November 1949, there were only 395 articles in our constitution which were divided into 20 second parts and eight schedules these were originally but at present 
the number has been increased our constitution has been uh, even even has become more uh, lengthy uh, and now uh, we have 465 articles and 25 parts and we have 12 schedules and what is the reason why our constitution is is so lengthy so basically there are uh, there are four factors one is historical factor like uh, before uh, our constitution came into existence we were following government of indian act of uh, 1935 so which was bulky which was very very huge so this was the base of our constitution so our, the base of our constitution was already bulky this is one of the reason why our constitution is uh, so lengthy so if the base is lengthy automatically the upcoming product will be lengthier second is geographical factor as you already know that uh, india is a vast country and um, it's it has it is full of diversity you will find different culture different people different languages different religion so we need a common base uh, and the base is our constitution so in order to mention everything into one document it has automatically become lengthier third is single constitution we follow we as an indian follow single constitution that means we do not have a separate constitution for state and the center we are following this one constitution whereas if i talk about america we have different different constitution one is for uh, center like usa united states of america all the united states and other is for individual states and third fourth is uh, those who have written this constitution were legal personalities so if you are a legal if you are a legal person if you are a, if you know the law so you will try to write everything you will not uh you will not uh, leave any stone unturned you will write everything uh, into it so hence it becomes it has become the lengthiest constitution and so this was the first silent feature which we have discussed like lengthiest and written constitution and why historical uh, geographical and then we have legal personality have written this right so other factors are there so let's now let's see the second point that we have we have taken many things from various sources and here are these so so in order to understand uh, this point we have to see the parts so basically we have three parts one is structural part second is philosophical part and third is political part structural philosophical and political so most of the structural part of our constitution is derived from government of india india act of 1935 so this was the basic of our constitution i have just mentioned in the first point as well so we have taken the base that is why we have taken the structure out of this right for example we have taken federal scheme we have taken office of governor we have taken judiciary we have taken public service commission now coming to the next point that is philosophical part so we are discussing here three parts one is structural philosophical and political so first we have done structural we have taken from government of india act of 1935 and now coming to the next point that is philosophical part of constitution now uh, we have uh, we have derived this inspiration from american and irish constitution so from american and irish constitution right so from american we have taken fundamental rights independency of judiciary judicial review impeachment of president like we can impeach the president uh, and removal of supreme court and high court judges whereas from irish constitution we have taken directive ds dpsp directive principle of state policy nomination of 
a member of Rajya Sabha and method of election of president. So basically, we have taken a few things from Irish, we have taken a few things from US, and few things from the basic government of India Act 1935, and coming to the third point, that is political part. That is political part. So first, we have discussed structural part, 1935 Government Act, second is philosophical, US and uh, Irish, and third is political part. So political part, is uh, political part is the, uh, we have taken from British constitution, right? And uh, we have taken the cabinet government and the relation between the executive and legislature. So here are the, here are a few things which we have taken from British constitution. One is parliamentary government. In India, we have parliamentary government. Like we have parliament. So this concept we have taken from Britain. Then rule of law, legislative procedure, cabinet system, writs. There are five types of writs. This also we have taken from Britain. Then we have parliament, parliamentary privileges. Uh, then we have bicameralism. So all the points we will discuss one by one, maybe in the upcoming videos. But here are just the short uh, review of the silent features of our constitution. Right? All right. So. Other things also we have taken from different countries like Weimar Constitution of Germany, uh, which was 19, which was from 1920 to 1933. Uh, from this 13 year of constitution before Hitler came into existence. So we have taken the taken the suspension of fundamental right during emergency. This provision we have taken from Germany. And other is fundamental duties, which we have taken from Soviet Constitution USSR, which is now Russia, which is now called as Russia. And then we have taken freedom of trade and concurrent list from uh, Australian Constitution. All right. So we have taken, we have discussed two points so far. First is a lengthiest written constitution. Right. It is lengthiest plus written. And we have also discussed the factors, geographical, historical, then legal personality. And second point we have, why the, the features is, the feature is we have taken it from many different countries. We have taken many features from many different countries. And we have made it the best constitution of the world. Right? So we have taken few things from US, from a few things from UK. Irish and Germany and USSR, Australia, which we have recently discussed. And third point is uh, our constitution is a blend of rigidity and flexibility. Right? So let's see the third point. All right. So a rigid constitution, what, what do you understand by the term a rigid constitution? Rigid constitution means it requires a special procedure to amend for the amendment. We have already discussed that many amendments have been taken place. If you do not remember, please revise whatever this, this way I've discussed in the beginning of the video that there are five major amendments. These were, I just show you, these were important amendments. These were 7th, 42nd, 44, 74, and 74. And 42nd is the most important amendment. It is also known as mini constitution, right? So we were discussing the uh, rigidity. So a rigid constitution means that requires a special procedure for its amendment. For example, American constitution. So in America, it is not easy to amend uh, the constitution. And a flexible constitution means like it can be amended in a simple manner. Ordinary laws are made, right? For example, British constitution, like British constitution is not the written constitution. Uh, so uh, it is easy. That means it can be uh, amend. It can, can be amended through a simple procedure as well. 
so in indian constitution is a mixture of rigid and flexible uh, amendment so how to amend there are as i told you that we can amend by either by simple majority or maybe we can amend by special majority that depends on the law uh, which law needs a simple majority or which law needs a special majority uh, some specific law particularly will be amended by special majority only that means two third uh, two third majority members of the each house each house is lok sabha and rajya sabha present and voting plus overall overall voting so it is quite difficult to amend few things right so it is a mixture sometimes it is rigid sometimes it is flexible that depends on the law all right coming to the fourth point it is federal system with unitary bias we have discussed three so far one is one is uh, lendius plus written second is we have taken many sources from various constitutions third is it is a mixture of uh, flexibility and rigidity that depends on the law and fourth is federal system with unitary bias i hope you are learning with me all this i am revising i am keep on saying the same thing so that you can revise easily you can write everything in exam right so that you can score full marks in your exam if the question comes write the features silent features of the constitution you should be able to represent in this manner like first what are these points and then second how we can elaborate these points right so you should know the method how to write an answer how to write an answer how to represent an answer all right so coming to the next point it is federal system with unitary bias all right so here it is so first of all uh, federal system we can see in us like uh, america united states of america follows the federal system where state and center have equal powers and maybe sometimes state can also overrule uh, the state uh, the center i mean whereas in uk we see the unitary system where center has more power than more power than state but when it comes to india it is mixed it is federal system with unitary bias that means we are we have some federal system but we are more inclined towards unitary that means we are more inclined towards uh, british uh, system although this federation term is nowhere defined in our constitution because article 1 describes india as a union of state right it is a union of states uh which means indian federation is not the result of an agreement by states that means states have not made india rather india has made states like state this means this statement means state uh did not make india as a country like all states came together and they say india no it is not like that and second is no state has the right to secede from the federation no state can say okay i am not going to be the part of india it has to be within india and that is why it is union of states it is union of states all right so as i have as i have as i have told you that we are federal system with unitary bias so let's discuss the feature of what is federal system what features has a unitary system so if it if i say uh, federal like what uh, what do you what 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 features do you see <clears throat> in indian constitution uh, from which you can you can say it is a federation because here we see two government one is at central level one is at a state level second is division of powers powers have been divided like these role will be done by center only these duties must be performed by state only and third is supremacy of the constitution 
in case of any conflict we will refer the constitution whatever it says we have to stick to it then we have rigidity of the constitution this point we have already mentioned in the third one and then we have independent judiciary like uh, we, uh, as you already know that india has three bodies our constitution has three body one is a legislative second is judiciary third is executive and all the bodies are independent right so we have independent judiciary and then we have written constitution so all these points make the indian constitution as a federation as a federation because in india we see everything that is why federation now why we call it unitary why we call it unitary or non federal because we have a strong center like center always prevail second is we have single constitution we do not have a different constitution for haryana or for delhi or for uh, maharashtra we follow everywhere in every part of the india we follow single constitution moreover we have single citizenship right this is one of the features of unitary single citizenship you cannot say i am my citizenship i am uh, i am i am you have a you have a in, you are indian and as well as you are uh, uh, you are from some state maybe you are from maharashtra so you are only indian no matter from which state you are you will remain indian only so we follow only one citizenship and we have here all india services and emergency provis problem provisions so all these features make uh, indian constitution as unitary few experts also uh, have said something like kc where has said our constitution is quasi federal because he says that it is just for the just for the name it is federal where it has unitary uh, features morris jones says our constitution as a bargaining federalism like state always ask for its rights all right so we have discussed four points so far these four points were lengthiest constitution then we have taken many sources blend of mixture of uh, rigidity and flexibility then we have federal system with unitary wise so just take 10 minutes time to i mean 10 seconds time and then see what all we have discussed in these four points right stop pause the video and revise whatever we have discussed in these four points and then we'll move further pause the video and see and revise everything all right so i hope you have revised these four points now coming to the next point is parliamentary form of government this is the next feature of our constitution that is parliamentary form of government let's discuss this point uh, presidential system like two types of systems are there one is presidential system and second is parliamentary system so first we discuss presidential system presidential system means where uh, the doctrine of doctrine of separation of power between two organs exist like legislative and executive and parliamentary system means uh, there is a cooperation and coordination between these two bodies so you will always see that there is always cooperation and coordination between legislative and executive and why we say it is a parliamentary what are the features of parliamentary government in india since we see a dissolution of lok sabha after every 5 uh, years of time we have elections where we see uh, a new lok sabha members so Uh, the previous lok sabha dissolves a new one comes into existence for the next 5 years 
this is one of the features second is majority party rule whosoever has the more vote will rule third is there is a collective responsibility of the executive to the legislature like i have already told you that there is a cooperation and coordination between legislative and executive so this is the same thing and then leadership of the uh, prime minister or the chief minister obviously we have uh, honorable modi modi ji uh, which is a leader of our country and every state also has uh, cm uh, so they also lead their state so there is a leadership right so this was the fifth point and let us come to our next point that is sixth one it is parliamentary parliamentary sovereignty and judicial supremacy right so we have parliament also supreme judicial also supreme on the one hand if you read it you will get to know on the one hand supreme court can declare parliamentary laws as unconstitutional through its power of judicial review that means if any law law has been made uh, by the parliament supreme court supreme court can make it unconstitutional because it has the power of judicial review whereas parliament has its has its own power parliament can amend the major portion of the constitution through its constitution power so both have power in their own area right so that is why our constitution is amazing uh because the framers of the indian constitution have preferred a proper synthesis between the british principle of parliamentary sovereignty and the american principle of judicial supremacy right so this parliamentary this parliamentary sovereignty we have taken from britain and judicial supremacy we have taken from america and in indian cons framers of indian constitution have Uh, preferred a, a synthesis between britain and america so we have a mixed constitution right so just be uh, have be proud proud to be an indian and thank you so very much for listening if you have any doubt just write in the comment box i will come up with my new video very soon uh, or if you have any doubt you can ask in the comment box thank you so very much and like the channel if you like this video subscribe the channel thank you very much bye bye